our Mendy board. We'll start as usual with a small uh, public forum. Uh, and if you're here for a funding request, uh, you've got 10 minutes, 10 great questions. Um, otherwise, you've got five minutes. So um, why don't you start with you, Jesse? Come up and, re and regale us with your, um, with your woes. Well, I don't have any worries, but I do Thanks. obviously have a request. Um, yeah, sort of okay. So I think people will read the application. It's specifically for a shredder chipper to support our community in probably south of Yanga, realistically. Um, the application is through the Yanga Community Educational Trust, and that's an umbrella um, to this application. Um, because should we be successful with getting the shredder, then it would be a community asset. And so that's why I felt that it was best to come under the Educational Trust because they um, work for the community. Uh, the purpose of it is to support, uh, primarily at this stage, to support the Ara um, more Hikui Whaka Order project, which is the wellbeing walkway up at the hospital. As you all know, the hospital serves everybody in Hokianga, and we've got over 7,000 people on our register. And the, um, this project is around growing organic kai, growing more resources, and making a, a wellbeing walkway, a space where everybody can enjoy and reconnect with nature and be uplifted in the while they're at hospital or visiting or people just come from the community now actually. So it's the shredder itself is part of giving us the ability to deal with some of the hospital waste on the ground with the cardboard that's generated, quite a lot of a lot. At the moment the cardboard is burnt. Um, along with some other things that make it, I believe, not the best way to deal with it. However, if we get the shredder, which can also chip some green waste, and um, it will be put through the compost or used in the garden and in the normal spaces, and um, yeah, turn what is now being just wasted and not used into something that is supporting the soil and ending up to be hired for the hospital and for final need through the welfare group at the hospital. Um, so what else do you need to know? Um, so it's for the whole community, but primarily at this stage, the product will go through the hospital gardens. Uh, and that, that project itself sits under the Taumata Rungo within the hospital, and it's funded through lotteries at present. Um, but that budget is, isn't allowed, doesn't allow for the shredder. Um, it will also give us the capacity to use the compostable packaging because if you know you get your takeaway cups and so on, they don't actually go into your home compost, and most people are just throwing them into the landfill. So this a shredder um, makes it more easy to deal with. So I already have the very good. Bins that make hot compost that's funded through CBET and they're supporting um, this whole sort of waste management. I also have funding through Kai Order to, um, to spend some time teaching people on better use of waste. And so this sort of makes it and gives us more capacity to grow that whole idea. Right, any questions for Jesse? No, I'd just like to say to you, don't buy a toy because You'll have branches sometimes a wee bit bigger. And I see you've invited the six horsepower one, that's what it ticks on. And I'm just wondering whether you should try and get a bit more money and buy the bigger one. If you want to give us more money, I would accept it. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand that, but if you buy something that's not going to work properly, yeah. then you won't use it and you've really wasted that money. Yeah, um, as I say, so it, yeah, I wasn't sure how much to ask for. I've been guided by CBEC, and I think that their Tehiku board has um, granted them one, and they're relatively pleased with the C7. Is it the have, have, you seen, have you seen it working? I haven't. Have you? No, no I've got one, but it's a, okay. a little bit bigger than that one. Okay. And yet, 
it's only just big enough. Um, I would be very happy to take whatever money was available, and then if I can get other money to get a better one, that would be good too. I just think you should have it. Better one. No, no, um, have a look at it. Okay. Let them show you what it'll do. Yeah. If it's, if, if it's a toy, you're just wasting your money. Yeah. Okay, we'll go around this way. So, Louis. Yeah, you say it's for the use of the community mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Does that mean we can hire it? No. Okay. Sorry, Louis. Uh, I don't or, think. Or borrow it? Like um, I, borrow it I think it. I think at this stage, for one, people can hire chippers or they can hire people to bring their chippers, and I, I, I don't want to get into that. Uh, there's a whole lot of health and safety, and also uh, maintenance issues, and I don't see that as the purpose. More for community projects, like for example, at the campus down in Rawane. That's a community project. I would go down there, or somebody who's very experienced could sign a form to take responsibility and use it in that way. Um, but not for hire for the community. I don't think that's a, what we're looking at. Yeah, just one. No, 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 no. Yeah, that, that's a wise choice. What you just said about that, okay. because yeah. um, people right. need to yeah. respect and look after the gear. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, GC. Uh, I think it's going to be a good, you know, good thing. But I worry about umbrellas. You know, other groups. Why can't that group actually apply themselves? I mean, they can come to us to apply. Um. And I think they need to learn to do that. Yeah. The, so the whole um the Wellbeing Walkway Pathway is actually. They just wanted to support the project rather than having assets for themselves and running that particular project. As you know, they're more interested in doing books and events. So I think that's why it was me that went to ask them because I felt like I didn't want to own a chipper and have it be seen as mine. I wanted it to be seen as, and, and to actually be coming under the community. Mm. Because then there's no confusion about that I gained the chipper. Yeah, okay. So, well, I was, to be clear, the chipper is going to be owned by the Kaikiri Hoki Community oh. Education Trust. Is that the Hokianga yeah. Hoki Community Education Trust. I, if we're successful, then I would sign an agreement with them that they would be caretakers of it. They don't want to own assets, but should, yeah. So what, when you're talking about this is an umbrella application, who who's the umbrella? The Educational Trust. So do they own the chipper? Mm -hmm. I imagine that they would with an agreement that it's for the community and at this stage managed by myself and if not by me then passed on to be managed by somebody else who would take care of it and... So if you don't, you're the umbrella organisation applying for the chipper, they're not going to own it until you've got an agreement with them. So if they don't agree to own it, even though they've umbrella this application, who will own it? Well, they will agree. That's been the, that's part of the. Um, I mean, there's no agreement until I'm successful in getting a chipper. So at the end of it, that the trust that is umbrella it is going to own the chipper. Yes. Yes. So why don't that trust then just apply for the chipper rather than umbrelling an organisation that isn't going to own the chipper? Do you see what I'm, what I'm trying to... Yeah. Probably, yeah, 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 sure. Um, because in the immediate term, the chip, they don't have a need for the chipper, they just want it available in the community. And the project that I'm working on at present has a need for the chipper, and I believe it will be an asset to the wider community. Um, I could redo that if it should be owned by somebody else, then that's fine. I think if you just left out the words umbrella organisations and this is an umbrella application and just applied for the chipper mm -hmm. for community use, a okay. core project would have been okay. a lot simpler. Yeah. Yeah. So I should have done it under my own? No, no, under no, 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 H H H H H H H H H H H H H H H yeah, yeah. Rather than putting on all these umbrella organisation yeah. application words. That's just, just yeah. Yeah. John, yeah. my question, 
I'd have preferred that way, by the way, just finishing that off, because that, that way, um, the, you know, we cleared everything done. But just a question on what is, um, obviously it'll be used up at the hospital and it's going to reduce and divert um, what would be going to landfill. Any idea of the volumes we're talking about here? So it's going to cost all right. You're ticking a whole lot of good things, but any idea of the volume that you actually uh, are going to be composting? Um, I think the green waste is unlimited. Like, um, I mean, we can attract green waste if we needed it in terms of the cardboard and the compostable waste. Um, with the cardboard, they pro oh, I couldn't talk, talk about the volume, but they are burning and incinerated from the cardboard every day. Yeah. Um, it would be nice. So you probably it would be nice to know, so we get some idea because it does cost council yeah. dollars a ton. Yeah. Going through something, something. But I agree, and also I agree with Laurie. Um, don't. Um, you know, it, I would expect at least a 30 horsepower version. If I can raise the funds, I would like to get the best chipper shredder that I can get. I think there's one sitting at Piney Village on you. See what's going on a little bit? <laughs> I know someone that's got a second hand. They want to sell a good second hand one, then. Um, well, just get just. Yeah. Do you? Do you know someone? Yeah. Is that your horse, man? Yeah, that is the name. Is it a good one? It is a yeah. fair horse, man. It's an ex model. Yeah, we might have got two. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm open to, um, you know, a well maintained. Model. Um, I think we're done unless it's a really, really burning. Well, it is, a, it is a burning question because that's a, I, I've got a bit of concern about the hospital burning all this cardboard. Oh, okay. 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 okay, we'll leave that later. Okay, thanks. I'm not in charge of that and I have a concern. If I can shred it, it's even better because I can actually bulk up the, and improve the soil that is growing right. the plants okay. at the hospital that we're already doing. Yeah. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Do you need me or do I go? No, you can go. We'll make the decision. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, sorry, I just want to keep these questions on topic. That's all. We're already over time. Um, healthy families far north. Come on up. I thought we were last. No, we're getting... Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. I thought you were in the middle of feeding. She looks well, but doesn't she? She does. Yes. Um, I think we have a PowerPoint that's coming up, but kia ora, uh, ko kia mea tōko ingoa, te heke te tapu, te heke te te iwi, um, I'm the Healthy Families Finals Manager, um, we take a systems approach to um, keeping te tai tokero well, and we cover south of Tōwai up to the Rema Wairua, um, and for us, I think this morning is just to come and share what we've been up to, understand what's happening in your space, we've been making our way around the boards, to kind of share our work um, and we haven't really had much, um, we haven't been in Kaikuhi Kuhi and Hokianga uh, as of since I've started in the role. I've come from the Southern Initiative which is an innovation unit embedded in the Council and uh, I've been in the role for about six months now. So we're here to share and um, to actually kind of make a commitment. I've got new resource um, coming on in the beginning of the year. We're well, quite well known in our, in our work here. Um, so I'm excited to have them come on and come alongside our communities here and be embedded and working alongside um, our whanau on this coast. Um, and so I'm going to introduce my team who, we've got a short presentation and we've got five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so this is Paul and Tuffy and Sophie, and Paul's going to talk about one of our work streams and an initiative that's sitting in it at the moment. So kia ora. 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 Lead Systems Innovator and Health Families Far North. Um, the initiative I've been looking after is uh, Tupatahi. So Tupatahi came about in March 2020. If you can think back to March 2020, uh, around the 22nd, 23rd of March, we um, there was Anti Karen, Anti Hini, Phil Grimshaw, I'm sure you know Phil Grimshaw, he's more famous than Kai Kali, and, um, and myself. And we were in a queue outside New World, <coughs> queuing up to get Kai for Kai parcels. Because on that day, we just didn't know if what we were going to, how we were going to get Kai. You know, we were allowed two items, and we went around about six times around New World and then out to counter, filled baskets. 
So what came out of that was, why have we gone to, into such a place where we don't know where Kai is going to come from if the supermarkets all of a sudden close down? So we looked at, um, so through our MRI uh, meetings um, with the Fabian and Fabuloa, we came up with Tibetalia's initiative and to look at Kai security. First reaction was, let's buy tractors, let's buy all of this equipment and we're going to go plow every field and we're going to cure the problem. I said, okay, what they gave it to me, for some reason they gave it to an Irishman, and they said, right, go, you run with this call, you got it, you know, take those training wheels off. And I go, okay, what's the budget? $1,800. Oh, okay, we're not going to buy much for that, not even spare. So what we did was, we started asking questions and we sent out quest, uh, questionnaires to Survey Monkey, and we came up with um, things like, well, our Kamariki, our, um, our Moko, they don't know where how fresh kite comes from. So that was the one thing that kind of we landed on. And one of the things that came out was, Learning how, how to prepare and grow kai is the is more important than numeracy and literacy. Our, our people believe that healthy kai is posh kai. So we started this process and up until that, on last November we held open days in Kaio and just had people coming in. So it was like you know, so we got these, we, we, we went and got statements and then we had some workshops. And out of that workshop, we got four initiatives. Um, food hub, a um, edible playground, events calendar, and cradle to college. And we landed on, the one thing we've landed on is the edible playground. And the edible playground is, 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 an, is an initiative that we went there. We went there and we tested it. We went out and tested it all through our, um, we tested it through the uh, 30 fan and we came up with a core design team and we came up with a space behind the library, which is not, maybe not necessarily where we're going to have it because of, of people with disabilities. But we looked at the unique features, the um, unique spiritual, physical, edible, and we came up with a playground which has redesigned re its own, what's the word I'm looking for? On um, deconstructed play as we know it, where it's kind of natural. It's a natural playground. So what we're looking at here and what we're asking is here today is, you know, this is a blueprint that we can put everywhere. When you're redesigning a playground, think of, you know, just to, how to deconstruct it. We've had some play, um, We've had some play um, activations where we went to Kerry Kerry, we went to Kai Kaya, and due to a lockdown, we were hoping to do it here, where we just popped up and we brought in these little these little play areas where people can go and do a little bit of potting themselves at the playground. And what we noticed was Fano actually came together and played together. The parents played with the kids and they spent an average of 20 minutes playing together and learning something and having fun. So, yeah, so that's where we're at at the moment with it. It's very close to realisation in um, realisation in Kerry Kerry or in Kaya. And yeah, we're very, very close to having it to realisation. A lot of people are interested in it. If I can just quickly summarise what Paul said, what we learned is that kids don't understand where the food comes from. And this concept idea was to help educate them around where their food comes from through playing with Kai in a playground space, so incorporating the two. We then built a team of stakeholders in our community, Fano, local organisations, NGOs um, and businesses who created a core cool co-design team to come up with the concept that you've seen on screen. And this concept is a blueprint that can be utilised Components of the blueprint can be utilised to um, repurpose existing play spaces to add an edible component, or also when in our design, when we're designing anything new. So this was, um, that's what this is. And if we go just go to the next slide, this is where we're at. Oh, oh no, so there isn't another one. So where we're at with it is we've been gifted the space behind the library from council. Um, we've got a whole lot of funding, so we're not here to ask for money. We've got a whole, like 16 organisations that, that see the benefit of it and want to invest in it. Um, what we're wanting to share with you guys is when you're thinking about building new stuff, 
or uh, refurbishing or revitalising existing spaces, how can we incorporate some of the components that Alfano have designed here? So that's what uh, that is about. Sure. Next. This is Tuffy. Kia ora, my name's Tuffy Toa. Um, I'm a systems innovator for Healthy Families Far North. And what we want to share is about the healthy environment approach and what is it. So we're aiming for all spaces to enable and promote, promote active, healthy and well communities. Um, so we have four PO that we work by. Um, why is the first choice, good PO for all. Um, being active and encourage movement as well as the drug and alcohol free. So we've got some bullet points there um, that you can have a look at later on. We'll get the next one, please. Oh, back one. Um, so we know that these are the three main categories that we have for funding and with the funding grants, we believe that there's one just making small changes with um, within the policy will be able to benefit farmers to import this into their funding applications. <laughs> um, so on the right hand side you'll see that that's the local grant application form and the application process if we can adopt the HPE or the HEA into the principles um, so the community grant policy section 1.11 so those are all the bullet points that get priority if you have those included into your application. And we've just added one more down the bottom for those who show they will adopt the healthy environment approach principles. So it's just the small things implementing those into policies that we can, we feel will make the biggest difference. Cool. If I just go back that one slide and I'll just quickly summarise. So. Uh, Auckland Council um, implemented this back in 2017. So all funding applications now apply this, our Healthy Environments Approach principles across everything. So um, there's some really great stats that we can share with you. It's an easy change. The onus then goes on the event organisers and then utilising funding to ensure the real basics, essentially, that there's water, there's a healthy food option, that there's drug and free alcohol, and that they create some kind of movement or activity within a funding environment, uh, within an event environment. Um, so yeah, that's the ask for that. Kia ora. Yay. If I just take, um, what is the slide? So we know that across the three boards, about $450,000 worth of funding is allocated each year. And so you have $450,000 worth of opportunity to create environments where our event organisers, our community members that are applying for funding have a bit of a social responsibility to, um, that we all collectively are working towards uh, positive social outcomes. And this is the kind of process we take. Uh, last one, because I'm sure we're over five minutes. Placemaking. So this is kind of a little bit, um, this is my cup of tea. So placemaking, um, I know that our uh, spatial planning uh, strategies are coming up and there's a whole lot of um, placemaking kind of initiatives coming through council at the moment and uh, essentially what we're saying is we'd like to be part of that conversation and to be an organisation that um, kind of um, helps shape and form what we do in this space. Great. Kia ora. Thank you. You're right, you're okay for questions? Any questions? Okay, we'll start with John. Thank you. Um, you. You actually touched on a number yeah. of areas that are quite important to so cover a very broad area. Yeah. Uh, and I know you're just putting us in what you're actually doing. Um, there are. Like, so, can I, can I use one of these quotes? Yeah. The council has obligations with. with um, and this is a community. Yeah. I'll speak with the council. That we've got when we're looking at climate change and various other things. You know, I can think of this initially. It's been in there. This one I'm trying to juggle up. And then there's placemaking, which yeah. all these places are actually doing as well. Uh, I, I presume you'll be looking at the former rural area in terms of any placemaking in yes. the area. Yes, and Tehaku because they're just starting to get them just kind yeah. of. And they're placemaking these yeah. in the next They've got some good initiatives of growing. Yeah, they're revitalization. Well, I'm trying to make the connections here so I can understand it. Uh, and so can we, can, can I actually contact you on some of these things? 
And if you looked at <coughs> community gardens as well, I know the initiatives here, there's, there's a group doing community gardens, they've done about eight, and that's all eight or nine. They've gone around to their places and put the gardens in to encourage plantings of various things. Yeah. So we partner. We're a partner. We're a non-financial partner of Kyoto Funding, um, so that which is part of efficiency as another stakeholder. So we haven't, of lately, but we are a new partner in that our funding model to help support community gardens and especially those of our whanau and whenua. So no, I haven't in those gardens, but yes, we're about to. No, and that's what I um, alluded to in the beginning of my quarter that we haven't been present here, and um, that's something we've, I've actually been building our workforce, and we have two staff members that start in January that will be solely um, committed to Kaipuhi Kuhi and Hokia. So excited about them starting. Who else? Questions? Um, does someone stay at the park, obviously, with the tamariki, or is there set times where they, when they do the planting while they're playing in the playgrounds? No, so this uh, this the whole initiative around the um, edible play space is that it's a community where we don't want to be monitoring or um, watching kids or anything like that. And it's what what we learned from our Fana and the core co-design team that we brought together to design this is that actually... Um, that they're capable of doing it, but they've never known how to. So it provides an educational opportunity, it provides a hands-on experience, as well as um, a structured play and a and a space to connect and um, kind of be a fun. Yeah, so the library um, are looking to kind of host the space because they can see that being a natural, um, um, incorporated naturally from the library into the backyard where it's sitting. So, yeah, we wouldn't be kind of watching the kids. It's the kids and the whanau who bring and come along to the space. They would do that themselves. Are you actually going into the schools? Because I know lots of you know rural schools who you know who will actually benefit by this, and this might be good to incorporate it into the curriculum for next year. So, and that's a great question. So, for us, the systems change, and what are we learning that we can then share and elevate? And embed into state curriculums for um, schools. So we uh, we were up in Niwa for a little bit. Um, schools have been a little bit hard with COVID, and they've been off and on. And so our co papa has been priority for them. So we have we we actually haven't been into the kura because there's a whole lot of ha stuff happening that um, we don't think it's we're as important as what's kind of occurring at the moment with COVID and stuff like that. But it's not that we don't want to. Um, oh, I think it would be great. Ask Wolf Boy, he's one of the teachers in our at the. <laughs> yes, I'm going over there because my boy needs to come to Kura, so <laughs> I, I need to come over there to register. <laughs> right. Do you want to. We had a, 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 a questioning eyes, Mogul. Um, <clears throat> no, I'm going to wait for next year. I'm okay. Would you like to know who's starting? Yes, I would. Oh, okay. Is coming on board with us, and Rawania Everett. Oh, awesome. awesome. So, right. they will be Hokianga and um, Kaihoku. So, cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. Awesome. Lovely meeting you guys, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Thanksgiving. Sure. Your turn. Okay. How's your, how's your exhibition going? I'm going to see it. How many generations of rising? Already old chestnut, but I am a little bit more than annoyed about the lack of action. I've raised this issue before the community board. I've even written to the CEO. And still, that piece of grass down there is not mowed. It's in the contract, because when um, Mike Colbert was in charge, he assured me he checked on it and it was in the contract. They went back and finished it. That is simply not good enough. It's sloppy maintenance and not really good enough when somebody's paid to do something and doesn't do it. And because they haven't done it for so long, I'd like it to go down below the apple tree and finish the strip to the corner to make the road tidy. Something needs to be done about that. I don't ever want to come back to it again. Another chestnut, Ray Phillips two agents. When is there going to be some real progress on the acquisition of that two agents? 
dangerous situation. There's a footpath to the showgrounds. I was out there visiting somebody the other day. I saw a near miss. Now, if it's good enough to have a footpath from Pai here to Haruru Falls for no pedestrians and Pukinui for no pedestrians, <laughs> we've got to have one here for the showgrounds sooner rather than later. Yeah, that. And likewise, from the Marae down to the cemetery and Manu Kahi Road. Going over the humps, that's an accident waiting to happen. I do not want to see in the paper a car reportedly going into a crowd of people coming back from the cemetery. I don't want to see that ever. Lastly, a pleasant happy note. There's an exhibition of photographs that I've taken over the last 40, 50 years down there in the old dairy factory in Thorpe Road. Please feel welcome to come along and have a nice You might even see something there that interests you. Okay, can I can I have that photo of the mow, the mowing area? And I'll we'll, we'll, we'll ask you from the board. Okay, um second um there was a particular business case, the Haruru Falls Pai uh, footpath. Yes. They had a particular business case. Um, I can't remember what it was, John. You remember? We got we got told what the business case was, John. Can you remember? Um, <laughs> if I remember it correctly, um, um, you should give it. It was because we lived there. Oh, that's right. Yeah, sorry. We one of the staff lived there, so they knew it would be used. So, um, and we don't have that. Op we don't have oh, that. How ridiculous! That's not good enough for the consumer. Okay. There is something for your address. I might have Okay. It's a resume of the life of Brian Fulbright's 40 years in Kaito, okay. and as a Kaito document, it fits quite interesting. Okay, I'll, 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 this, I'll keep this one again. Cool. Okay, and, yeah, thanks. Um, <laughs> right, any, any further questions of, um, of Sean? No, thank you very much, Sean. Oh, Always a pleasure to see you. Little thing. I don't know who was responsible for the planter boxes on Recreation Road, but that's a major bypass for heavy traffic. Who the hell gave the authority to narrow the causeway with planter boxes? That's inviting accidents. I don't know who gave them the authority to do it, but it's still not really good enough. Great. Thank you very much. Sorry to be a bit I agree with you, Sean. Uh, and I think you do too, Jill, do you? Oh, yes. Will you want to have your say? Yes. Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay. Do you want a cocoa? My name yes, is Jill. Yeah. I'm here. I wrote an application near the end, but I'm here to bleep first about oh, I don't agree with recreation mode. I personally, I think it's an accident waiting to happen. It's very confusing. I just don't get it. It was a very simple, clean road, and all the years that I've been around quite I've never met anyone that's actually been hurt on that road, so I don't think it's made safer. I think it's made it dangerous. If anything, it's not safe. It's the stop sign coming up from Thorpe Road, that's my next issue, where people just don't stop, they just cut straight so. Um, I have seen a car, see so another car like that. Anyway, my real issue is about the little cycle buddy which has gone on Thorpe Road. Now, this, um, a week ago, someone removed my professionally made passionate sign off the fence, and then yesterday, this enormous coloured sticker was put on the cycle buddy wall, and which is on Thorpe Road. And I have my business on Thorpe Road, passionate, and oh, I'm a bit nervous or something. So they've got so long about me, and because I'm a reactive person, the first thing I did was get myself pen and initial myself on that new poster. Which, and today, someone has been over the night and tagged the whole bottom anyway and white spray paint. So, Thought Road, this cycle study is on Thought Road, on that map, there's no Thought Road. It's just a big long space, so I've written Thought Road. They've put me down as I'm number 28, passionate, feed and breakfast. I do not do breakfast, food's not my thing, as you can see. So, I cost out the breakfast on art, craft and collectibles, and I do do accommodation. Um, they put me down as 28 on their listing, but on the picture, I'm 27, which is the Pa Keke Lodge, which is in Kaiho. I kind of think there was no consultation, oh, and my flyers, which I put on the board, have gone. I would appreciate that someone just said to me, oh, we're going to take the shit down. 
um, specifically no, fine, that's fine with me. I would like my poster back because that is promoting Dad's exhibition, which is on Thorpe Road, which if you're a cyclist, you wouldn't even know where Thorpe Road is. Um, I've got lots of notes, but anyway. I think that's really just my belief. Oh, and also, for the last five years, I have cleaned the tagging off that cycle plane sign thing, because it gets tagged everything, so I've gone and I've painted it and cleaned it, and I've picked up the rubbish. Yesterday, when they put the big sticker up, not one person picked up the piles of rubbish that were around it. So, the, sorry, can I ask you a question? The cycle yes. fighting, the cycle fighting that you're talking about. Um, it's a little. Oh, it's just a. It's like a community notice. Yeah, yeah, I know the one. I know the one. Mean. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, yeah, cool. cool. Uh, that doesn't have anything to do with us. Um, I think it's a business association <laughs> thing. Okay, it is so, a business association, but I'm part of community. I do pay rates. Yeah, but I am trying to set up a small business, so of course my signs get totally removed. My big sign was found down at Ahar Street, down the bottom. Yeah. A young guy found that and brought it back to me because I put it out there about the sign. I don't know if the people who were putting the big sticker on the sign board put my sign down or not. Uh, yeah, more cool. Kia ora. Um, Kia ora. Thank you for bringing your concerns to us. Just, I just have a couple of questions. For the cycle trail funding, a good person, I wondered if you had been to see the cycle trail trust manager by Adrian Tuddy because she's likely to know more or about any stickers or the removal or anything like that should be at your best point of contact. So I wondered if you had been to see her yet. I'm part of the cycle trail partnership. And she, no one she doesn't have any questions no. that. She would be a good point of contact though, because they manage that entire corridor. Do they? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, it's, it's so the cycle trail Okay, so who's cleaning up around it? Who's cleaning the entranceway to the cycle? You guys want to attract tourists to this town, you want them to stay. Well, the first thing they do when they come to the Kaito Yen is all this bloody shit around the sign. So if you want people to come to this town and go to all these places, well, maybe clean up the spot. I do it, some of my family do it, but people are paid to do it, I'm not paid to do it. I do it because that's where my business is and I want people to come to my business and I want the place to look nice. I don't think you'll find a community board member here that doesn't agree with you on making sure that we have um, the mm. best town we can have. Yeah. I agree with you there. My second one, um, RFSing is, sorry, RFSing is really great whenever there is illegal dumping and I do do a lot of RFSing. So we need to rubbish um, the other one was the recreation road, the planter boxes on our heavy vehicle bypass. That is a trial, and I wondered if you had submitted formal feedback on the council yes, website. Did. And okay. what they did? They edited everything. The whole tech context of my story was edited, and they put up maybe two or three little lines about what I've said, but the whole guts of what I felt about it was totally removed. So if that was a public forum for feedback to council, who is editing these comments? And I know a friend of mine put one up and they didn't even put her comments on. Are they screening what is said about them? What usually happens is, because this is, this is open until, um, the survey is open until the end of this month, I think it is, is that all, usually all gets collated and comes however you've written it to council. Or to community board. So I don't know how it's being screened. I don't know if there's a cap on how many words you can do. Uh, it shouldn't be being screened. Usually it's whatever you write in your info box gets screenshotted or whatever shotted, and we get the raw information that you put in there. So yep. we'll I have to check raw information, that. but Annie puts some nice words in. One box has already been taken. Oh, Woody box has already been taken out. Yeah. And, and where the current Okay, can we don't, the other one is, can we just keep it to questions? Well, there's so, no parking there. No parking. I agree with it. There's just no parking for that little school. Okay. Right, thank, thank you, John. I don't, I don't think there's any more questions. No. Oh, and you. also, they've just marked some little lines on the road, on the brick road, which I understand is going to be pedestrian crossing. Okay, I've had to bypass the trucks and trailers. So when a truck comes down Mangakahi Road and he has to turn into brick road, he has to stop probably with his trailer on Mangakahi Road for this little crossing. And personally, I think it's a complete waste of money of something that's only there for a year. Cool. Take our weights down, is that Catman? It wasn't. Thank you very much. Or whatever it is.
Right, there seems to be a theme going on here. Kelly, do you want to... Mr. Can Chair, I'm going to take leave to go to price setting. Yeah. Great stuff, thanks. Okay. Green. Okay. Um, no, 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 no. Just want to get she wants that. Can you wear that in English? Good morning, Green. How are you going? Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Unfortunately, Mr. Chairman, I am here begging for money. I don't really have anything to add to the application and the covering letter, um, except to say that the Bowery Community Board over the last few years has worked really hard getting money externally to improve the council asset of the Bowery Hall, which I'm sure you all saw in the meeting there last month. What we would on our budget list is to replace these wooden chairs over 30 years old with this model here as uh, in, according to the application. And this model here uh, is particularly good because it's easy to clean and it has a maximum um, capacity load of 300 kg, which in our area is, is quite important because we do have some big folks here. <laughs> and maybe so. So I'm really happy to answer any questions you might have rather than just go over what we've presented. Yeah, any questions, ma'am? I'd just like to thank the, the Darwinia Hall community because you do a great job. Yeah, and love, lovely looking. They're always looking Mr. Good. Mr. Chairman, there's got to be a better system than this, surely, to go yes. These people have to come and beg to replace their chairs. <laughs> I'm sure you can, there's some other official within the council can deal with that. You shouldn't have to do that. Mr. Barth, we're really quite happy to do this because we had this list. When we started the hall, I have to say it was like, a, 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 it was in a very poor state. People who had odd bits of furniture used to donate it to the hall and it was just totally amazing what we cleaned out of that hall. And going back to when the hall was shifted up. But we had lots of support from Sonnet Lodge and um, Hub Charity uh, in the past. But we would okay. like to, to replace these. Okay, uh, uh, John, sorry. Oh, yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chief. Just, just a question for Wayne. Um, Hall's obviously. Um, uh, a responsibility that the council's got, although we've requested the um, community board deputy have what responsibility for. Do you receive a budget of the funds being collected under the rates uh, and anything from the council? They, or they just leave you alone and let you just do whatever and find money from the community? To be honest, I can't answer that question honestly, but I think they just leave us alone to get on with it. Because they don't need that budget. And the hall is running really well under the present regime. We've had we've got uh, policies running. We have a uh, book and notice of caretaker, which is paid for uh, out of the uh, office ground floor, and that's working really well. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll follow a few things up. Cool. Just, be, just before I close, I'd just like to say that the Hall Committee is really appreciative of the work that's been done to date and the um, current um, council um, officers have been very helpful towards what we're going to do with the toilet area. And on a really positive note, we have the um, acoustic tiles are on the way, we've paid for those, they're almost here. And we got the other half of the grant, the, two, the 3,296 from Pub Charity. So we only need 3,296, Mr. Chairman. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I don't have any plans, but I'd quite happily leave this. Thank you, Gwen. Great, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just had a question. How are you guys feeling about this? Want to deal with it now? We want to deal with it later. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah.
Okay, okay right. So Kelly moves that the board approves the sum of three two nine six plus yes, if applicable, to be paid from the board's community fund account to Romney Community Hall. Yeah, okay, second. Um, does, it, does, it, does anyone want does anyone want to discuss this? What are you gonna do with your old chairs? <laughs> Pioneer Village. Pioneer Village. <laughs> Right, all those in favour? Aye. Everybody did? Carried. Thank you, Queen. That's Thank just how my day. Have a Merry Christmas. Okay. You too. Probably going to be back soon. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you. And finally, Linda, who you wanted to be last? I wanted to be last, yeah. Right okay. a, a response, and I've got a few things here. Um, so I'll try and keep my So, first of all, owning up to the Kaito Business Association did with consultation with ARCO mm -hmm. and with Adrian Curry, the cycle track board, um, get those signs designed for the cycle track. They were installed yesterday. Um, Jill did come and talk to me about a little bit of tagging she did, but one of my concerns is, you know, within 24 hours we had one of those expensive signs tagged already. So community tagging. Um, my comment to Jill was there were two 27s, no 28. So we missed it in our checking. If she'd come to us, we would professionally adjust it for us, for her. Um, but now we're dealing with tagging on tagging. So hopefully the signs, the purpose of getting those signs was to try and attract people into town um, to, to look at the, the different sites and things like uh, Pioneer Village and, and look at the shops so and increase the actual benefits of having a cycle track here. So that's one of them. Obviously, um, tagging or uh, another thing that we're looking at is um, how to keep Kaikoui safe together. So it's something that I've talked with Laurel and I'm very appreciative of, of the relationship that's been built in there of um, how we can address and pull a lot of the silo together instead of everybody doing their own little thing. Come up with some new incentives as how we can actually address not the crime, not just the crime, but the, the whole atmosphere and bring a positive type um, approach to creating a, a more positive, healthier, again, great contact this morning, healthier environment and a safer environment. Um, so that'll be on the, um, the books next year. Um, we've got an application in for funding to help with the community patrol cars. Now that's part of our keeping the community safe. But that's, that's, I think, page page 79, um, looking for that grant there. And, and just ongoing there, we're trying to refine now and get more reports coming back as to how effective that is and how we can improve that area and, and trying to get more feedback from the community as a whole. Um, Looking at uh, Sean's comment about a walkway through to the showgrounds, there's another incentive that is uh, being talked through, and that's the uh, extending of the cycle track through to Napa. So it's again, how do we get the community to get together to share this sort of information so everybody's getting that little bit of information there. Um, along the lines, as well as Sean saying, clean up our roads. So I will be putting in a request for service for bringing Hanover Road. So recently there's a beautiful walk pathway put in there. It is covered by certain parts of clear, but it hasn't been mowed, the strip hasn't been mowed. The, the weeds are up to <laughs> knee height for me. There's even the old tobacco weed which grows faster. So it needs some attention. So the regular maintenance obviously um, needs to be looked at, but I'll cover that through a uh, request for service as I keep trying to encourage others to do it. There are avenues to get our uh, comments back to council. Um, very successful networking meeting we held last week again to bring communities together and looking at the positive income. I think uh, opportunities for you later on, um, or maybe we combined, um, what's happening out at Innovation Park is, is very, very exciting and looking at bringing new things to the to the area. Uh, we had Wayne Rogers um, speak on, on that the other day, but just looking for positive things in the community to bring back and say, look, if we can get 
the money in the right place and get groups focused on um, putting their energy into different areas, we can we can we can choose make positive impact into the so thank you for your time. Okay. Any questions for Linda? Oh, question. Yep. Um, so I think the Sun Trail map, um, so that's the one that you got funding from the community board, so this yes. is where the problem is, the community board has helped fund me. Um, I think the tagging on it is probably a blessing in disguise yep. because I think you need to revise it. Um, who is your target market for the map? Cyclists, hopefully. Um, you haven't identified toilets. There's so many things on there yep. that you're not even giving the cyclists. Okay, I so see. your I toilets are toilet really. Yeah, the, the, uh, I'll go back and check. There are no toilets on there. I think you need to um, put the final district council actually in there as a service provider yep. because when you've got out of town people coming, um, they do have a toilet, they are the information. Um, they don't know to go to Te Araho to, to, you know, to use a toilet or to find information until they actually get into the main street. Yeah. Um, and I think that because Arco designed it, they have just put their flavour on it and not quite happy. And as, as, as us being the funder of that to you, yeah. I kind of think that we expect the KDA to do the best they can with the money. Yep. Yep. Valid point. Sure. Okay. Um, and you don't have a funding app, you've got a project report in. Um, yeah. Yeah. The project report will come once we've paid for it. Um, I'll double check because the initial signs did have toilets. Yeah. So, so I've actually got a photo of it on my phone if you need to want to see it. Great. Yeah. I was going to say I can shoot through an email. Yep. John. Yeah, you, Linda, you alluded to silos, and that's great because if you look at what's happening, you, you've got Arco Street Design, you've got Pukki uh, Kukukahi looking at options. Uh, we've had community boards doing work with the footpaths as well, which I will be removed because they're going to be sort of uh, roads or whatever it is now. Uh, which is, and, and yet we've got cyclists on our roads coming through. Uh, I would like to see, you know, if you're taking that initiative to the association to connect with all these groups, would be great because some of the decisions that have been coming across the table, i.e., oh, that's a bypass and hitting part of the boxes and so on. So, what is the best design that fits the needs of the businesses, fits the needs of recreation, fits the needs of you know, the cyclists and so on? I mean, there are several parties to, to pull together all of this. Yeah. Same problem that every large town has, but maybe we're not sitting down and communicating. So the association can do the best and that would be really pleased. And, and so you alluded to it. And I presume that was the thoughts and thinking behind the alluded. I just got a question to you. Sorry, I must say, John, I had, <laughs> I had my hearing tested and I had my... Uh, yeah, the sound, here, the sound here is not good. Yeah. I'm really impressed that Rani Hall Committee can organise this and council with all its might has not done this for several decades yet. So. Uh, heads off to the committee member, they should sort this out. But the question was really, um, is it so that, that breaking down the silos, is that something that the Business Association is, is going to is, um, is aware of and is going to push? Question. No, that is bringing the awareness of the silos here and hoping working with uh, Laurel and her role. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we can't hear something like that. We haven't got the resources and we're not the right people. We're, we're one of the silos in essence. Yeah. Um, just acknowledging that there are many and looking for the councils. So if there was a coordinator that could help break those silos down, the association be on board with that. Yes, uh, <laughs> definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Let's get into business. Um, right. Now, normally we would it's take a break. a break, but we can wait half an hour and take lunch. So if you just want to read, we may not finish the meeting, but let's box on. And, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So first you. order of business is the minutes from the last meeting. Are there any um, corrections to be had? Yes, I wasn't actually present. It doesn't show you. They put you down the screen then. You've got you. Uh, so I apologise. Thank you. And then you've got the apology, that's great. Okay, cool. My name was Walker. 
So the motion is the motion would be built up. The question is is the Kaka Hokan Community Board uh, confirms the minutes that corrected for attendance of our meeting be uh, uh, held on 8th November is a true and correct record. All those in favour? Aye. Okay, so John moves that schedule. Um, does, do we have a seconder? Yep. Okay, call John, do you have comments? Uh, no. no. Seems okay. So everyone, everyone's, everyone's happy with six weeks? No, 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 no. Give us a chance. Okay, okay. so Kelly, what are your thoughts? Well, Point is we, we don't have our first meeting until March. We'll have it to January and February. You know, like sort of. Well, we don't normally have one in January anyway. No, no. But we're on holiday. February. February. Yeah, February. Yeah, February. Yeah, February. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 So if we go to monthly, we could end up with one in February, you saying? Yeah. The only thing I thought of with the, that's positive about having six weekly meetings is it gives people more time to Do put that. in a report. Like that. You wouldn't do that anyway, would you, Louis? I've put in more reports than most. Yes, you have. Right, anyway, any other thoughts? So really, the only thing that this should be to see that we delegate to you to change the meaning. Well, that is, I mean, this is easy enough, right? What, what you can do is you can simply, um, I mean, it, 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 would make, it wouldn't make much sense to, to amend this, okay? Um, it, but the most sense is to simply vote it down and have somebody else make another motion with another with another um, uh, schedule, right? So. And there was only two Wednesdays when you look at the calendar that cause a bit of a thing because it's the infrastructure committee yeah. twice. Yeah. But I'm not on that, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so what are the, what are the feelings? Is it, I mean, I'm, I'm in for monthly meetings. Am I? Kelly is, Louis is, yeah. and okay, so there's, there's, there's okay, so we're, we're all there. So what I'm, I'm gonna now, I'm gonna put this to the vote. This motion that's just being put, right? Okay, so if you don't want six weekly meeting, the idea is you vote it down, you vote against. Okay, if you wish to have six weekly meeting, you vote for. Okay, so. so all those in favour of this particular schedule, please raise their hand. Otherwise, we'll say oh. Everybody against? Yes. 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 Okay, so this motion has been failed. Does somebody want to um, put in a suggestion for a new schedule? schedule? Okay, so um, Kelly suggests starting from February, the first Wednesday of each month, unless it um, unless it um, conflicts with something else, right? So, okay, so the best way of doing that would actually be identify the, the days. So, Kelly, you move that the Kaike Hokianga Community Board adopts a monthly meeting date start. So, so you're talking about the 9th of February. 9th of February? Mm -hmm. that, that's the Infrastructure Committee meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Um, Okay, so Marlene was suggesting Friday the 4th because the 2nd and 9th uh, have, have um, council meetings on them. Yeah. So, so how's Friday, the Friday the 4th. Yeah, so one, one will be on the 4th. You know, the first meeting of the month will be on the 4th. Okay. Or you can do it on the last Wednesday of January. One of the two. Um, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, no, the 4th. Friday the 4th. Friday the 4th, everyone happy with that? Yep. Okay. Um, then March the 2nd, which is already on there. April the 6th works. Um, May the 11th. Second week in May. Okay, 1st of June. 6th of July, 3rd of August. Um, the September 1 has a council meeting, oh, sorry, no infrastructure committee meeting on the 7th. Um, how about the 14th? That's the second week. Should we have it on the 14th of August? September. Uh, or, or you can have it on the 28th of August being, I'm mean, sorry, 28th of September. Hang on, no, hang on, sorry, I'm sorry. The yeah, okay. September, September is our last month, okay? Um, so uh, mid, you know, so the 14th would make, would make sense. Yeah, 14th of August, yeah. 14th of September, so 3rd of August, 14th of September. Right, 3rd of August. Yeah, that's the that's the first Wednesday. Yeah. And the fourteenth of September. Fourteenth of September. Yeah. Okay. Um, that'll be our last meeting, wouldn't that'll it? That'll be the last meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, which means the Hawking and Spray Committee meeting will be on, please, Monday month. On the same dates as listed, but uh, Wednesday the second of March. Oh, sorry, we've changed that now. So yes, it'll be the second of March. The 11th of May. 11th of May and the 17th of August. I'm oh, sorry, the 3rd of August. Uh, May, July, 6th of July. 6th of July. Yeah. yeah. So the 2nd of March, the 6th of July. Hang on, no, 2nd, 2nd of March, the right. 11th of May. So we do, are we doing, are we doing this quarterly, are we? Are we doing quarterly or every second every month? Every second month. Okay, yeah. Um, 11th of May and the 6th of July. Okay. You don't want one in September as well? Yeah, we're going to get him done with him. Shall we get this? Okay, and the delegates chair might have an authority to change the meeting Who wants to move that? Kelly moved. Yeah, Kelly okay. moved. Okay. And I'll second. Okay, all, and all those in favour? Aye. Aye. Okay, Terry. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks just for the you two, just before we go on. It seems to you know that that's our last meeting in September because it's the election year. Yeah. So do you think that maybe, like when we come back, that we can do something that sets out to people that might be interested in becoming community board members that they could attend those meetings, you know? That would be a good idea. So and if people were interested in becoming members and they were coming to these meetings and sitting, like, right. yeah. Yep. They're going to see the issues and things that are already taking place. So yep. when they stand for election and then they get in, they already watch the system and they have already yep. figured out what you know, because otherwise when you get Yeah. Okay, so I mean, surely we could pay for some kind of well, you, I think it's a promotion, I think we need to do something. That. Yeah. 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 I think that's tangentially related to the uh, the item at hand. Do you want a? Um, well, it is because it's yeah. in the executive summary. <laughs> do you want to make a? Do you want to uh, some make some kind of motion for that to happen? I mean, I guess. Yeah, because they, we'd have to put some money to it because yeah. the other side would cost some money. Yeah. Now, is there something you'd like the um, the proper sorry the PR department of the um, the council to take care of? Yeah. Yeah. Or oh, sorry, the community. What are they called? Communications about? Yes. Okay. And they can do it for all the boards too. You know, like it's not just not just our board. Okay. Um, well, can we especially the last two meetings maybe? Yeah, I just think if they come and they sit and they actually see what happens instead of putting their names yeah. up and they've never yeah, seen one. Yeah, they've done that. That's a good idea. Come through the CD. Come through and come through the CD. I'll put a um, request through uh, the CE's office for that very thing, uh, for invitations to CB meetings. Because they'll even get to see the staff and see what the staff do and, yeah. and, and learn something. Because <coughs> Great. They have the floor running. Instead of just... uh, I, I had a comment to make on page 21. Uh, staff assessments. This matter is of low significance. I, I, I sort of 
you know, oh, is, is it really that important? Is it not more important to us? Oh, okay. So significance is a definition. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's not the it's not the dictionary definition of the word. Um, it's the it's a definition according to the engagement and significance policy of the council. And because it, and all all it's saying is that um, this decision does not require full consultation. Okay, the, the minute you say this is of high significance, according to the policy, um, then we need to go out to the community for consultation. So it's not whether it's significant to us, oh, okay. it's whether it's significant enough to go to consultation. Okay, good. Okay, item number 6.2, Ground Lease has a part of the Recreation Reserve to a Highway Community Education Trust. Do I have a mover, please? Yeah. Laurie? Yeah. Okay. Laurie moves to the Kaito Hockey Community Board. Acting on delegated authority pursuant to section 73.3 of the Recreation Reserves Act recommends that the council public consultation process under the Reserves Act has commenced on the granting of the new ground lease to a highway community trust over approximately 780 metres of lot, blah, 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 blah. Um, and the Kaito Hawke Community Board is appointed to hearing submissions received in response to the consultation process and then make recommendations to the council in respect of granting the proposed, proposed lease. So, so, would someone like to talk about it? Uh, there was, a second, was there a second? Oh, Laurie moved. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay, Emma. I have some questions. There's been a lot of desire for. Um, Lease over the property. And the conditions, and having a lease before so many conditions. Is that being directed by the chair? Okay, right. Kay Meekings. Kay, are you here? I am, yes. Good morning. Okay, well, well we, we're going to ask you a few questions first. Um, and first, the first question comes from John Vusich. Where you go, John? There's been a lot of um, angst with the um, um, a highway uh, preschool training to get uh, to get a school put in there and to take over the premises to fix it all up, which they agreed to. But they need a lease before they can do that. And I'm just wondering if all that has been dealt with. If you remember uh, the request that the, the chair here has been working with. Um, been going through those processes, and I'm, and I'm not sure that, and also being requested the community board, requested the delegated authority to put together the lease. Where is the lease at? So at this point, there hasn't been a lease drafted. It needs to be um, negotiated. Um, so we were saying that we need, so under the Reserves Act, because we're doing an activity that doesn't sit with a recreation reserve, we need to do public consultation that um, an early childhood centre on a recreation reserve is acceptable for the community. Um, that's, that's a requirement under the Reserves Act. Generally, we, we can have the basic terms of a lease advertised as part of that public consultation, but that's not a requirement. Um, so at this point, we weren't tying the consultation to a particular term or rental, leaving that to um, to be negotiated by the property officer. So I guess what we're going, wanting to do is go out there to the, com to the community and say, right, this is a recreation reserve. In the past, there's been a place into here and it seemed to have, it was well patronised, I think, at some time and things have changed. Is is this the time to continue to have a, uh, a childhood education facility here on a recreation reserve? Or is this the time for it not to be acceptable and the reserve become a recreation reserve? Okay, okay. so so what, are we required to do that step? Uh, I mean, is it legally? Yes, so the is reserve... It, is it a legal obligation? Yes, the Reserves Act lays out that a reserve should be leased for the purpose for which it is classified and its purpose of classification as a recreation reserve and we're looking to do something that doesn't fit in with recreation reserve. Okay so and and because the previous the previous occupiers 
had a lease that dated from 1956, I think. Obviously, yeah. there was no there's no issue there because right. it was so. So, I mean, the fact that it was leased as a play centre does that not have bearing on the fact that it can be continued to be leased to a similar for a similar use? Um. You could do that, yes. You could, you, well, there is sort of a provision you might be able to work around. Um, but in but the use is a little different now in that play centre is a very much family, you know, the, the mums and the dads go in, they are the teachers, they're the people who set it up, they're the people who make the things that go there. It's very much very, um, a family orientated thing, whereas an early childhood centre it sits under the education department, another government agency. It's funded through a government agency, um, so they're going to receive money through that. Uh, and then I understand that if, if you use within a certain number of hours a week, then you also pay a private fee as well. So it's more in line with, I know they're a charitable organisation, but it's more in line with making some money rather than um, okay, but, but, but that's not, I mean, that's by the by, right? I mean, the fact is that kids are getting, getting ECE right there. No, I mean, the, the, the oh, why yeah, the purpose is wonderful. Yeah, I mean, I understand the purpose is, is wonderful, but we, we're just no, no, doing no, no, what no, needs to be done. Is, is, it, is it different enough that the Reserve Act, the Reserves Act obligates the council to go out to consultation just because somebody else is moving in to do the same thing? And, and before you answer that, let, let, let me, let me, um, I guess, let me clarify my my motivation for asking the question because this has now been going eighteen months, really? um, and I'm pretty sure it has. Um, and at any stage during that eighteen months, the council could have, of could have, identified this and gone out for consultation. Um, and then, and I, if I recall, the very first meeting I had with a with in, in this room with a council officer was, um, should we be going out for consultation? Okay. Um, and then it just got on and on and on, and it, it seemed to be that the uh, well, Highway Community Education Trust seemed to be the the, the, the preferred supplier, preferred leasing. And and all this time we've been led to believe that negotiations for this end have been undertaken. And in fact. I think um, the, the the proprietor or the trustee has been led to believe that as well. And so here we are, 18 months later, um, saying that we are now at step one. We're not, we're not at step 9.9, .9, we're now at step one, um, which leads me to believe, or leads me to expect that there's going to be another 18 months to two years before this poor woman who has done everything that we have asked, okay? And in fact, the, 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 the community board and the council have instructed staff to make sure this lease happens. I mean, I think it was only a council meeting three or four months ago, um, this was as part of a long-term plan, where the council instructed, as far as I can gather, that a lease be prepared or this be leased. Yeah, and here we are in complete, uh, complete opposition to all of the things the committee board has been saying and all the things the council has been saying, we've got to go back to step one. So I ask you again, as is the council obligated in, 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 in that fashion to go back to step one? Um, first of all, I'd like to say that the first I knew about this was on the December the 14th, uh, no, sorry, it was 9th of December. So the 9th of December, we were alerted by district facilities that this building looked to have been um, subject to some vandalism. So that, and that was from logistic facilities. Well, that's, still, that's still 12 months, I'm sure. It we is 12 would... months, I agree. Yes, it is 12 yeah. months. But I, first time I spoke to anybody okay, from- Okay, but that's okay. Let, 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 let's, say, let's say 12 months, okay, rather than 18 months, so we don't have to go down that track. Okay, but there's, there's, there's of, of the conversation, sorry, of the, the, uh, the, the <laughs> my outburst of five minutes ago, um, that represented something like 2% of it. So let's let's tackle the other 98%. I admit that 2% was wrong. It's 12 months, not 18. We've now got the other 98% oh. of my, of my when, uh, anyway. questions. Um, when, 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 
Okay, so if you took the chance, you could do that. So if somebody in the community decided that actually council's gone ahead and created an early childhood centre, which could be considered to be profit-based because it does receive government funding, um, and they chose to challenge that or um, take it to the ombudsman. Judicial, we judicial review, yep. Judicial review, we probably wouldn't stand up to it. Okay, how many judicial reviews have been taken in the last 10 years against this council against I'm, things I've no idea. I haven't, I don't, I haven't been here long enough to answer that one. Okay, I, I, we already know the answers. No, I mean, for all the, for all the, the so, this, um, decisions that the council made, I, I mean, I think we'll stand up for that one. I don't think anybody's that motivated. So, so you're, you're saying that we are wasting our time um, and the community is already behind this and they don't need to be consulted? I am not necessarily saying that at all. I think I think we've been wasting everybody's time, um, including the Ohio, so Ohio Community Education Trust. You know, I mean, we, we as elected members who've been dealing with us and the trust themselves have been expecting that this has been going towards a a a known end rather than an unknown beginning. And that's my okay. point, right? I mean, so um, some of the background could be that. Um, I think that, so there's a new position, property officer position. So um, Rob Coops used to be in a position here that was advertised over the last year and somebody came into that position and then they didn't last many weeks and they left. And then another person's been appointed. Um, and so they are handling all the new, all the leases. But our team, the legalisation team, handles things under the Reserves Act. So we're making sure that the Reserves Act part of this proposed lease is covered. So we need to address the issues of the Reserves Act. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're here for. So that's what we're doing. That public consultation is required under the Reserves Act because we're doing an activity that is not a reserve activity. Okay, cool. Yes, sir. Yep, thanks. Yes, John. John you're yeah, right. um, I think the, the chair sort of summarised things I've been rang up by this lady as well. And quite honestly, it's disappointing when there's expectations that this would be action, specifically requests from the community board, which were ignored, and specifically requests from council to go ahead with the lease as well. So, and that, so, so and I'm not pointing the finger at you or not, there's clearly been a, a failure within, you know, Council not managing staff and things being uh, pushed around and um, and delays happening, which is not um, you know, uh, and I'm not looking at you for that. But uh, what I what I concern I actually have now is this: if the if the Okaya Community Education Trust decides, oh look, this is not worth it. I'll try this and I've done this, and there's obligations on them to fix the whole building. We could end up with a situation where we've got a vandalised building, and or if the public say, "Oh no, you want it as reserved," and council need to be facing a significant liability to clear that building themselves, and um, it just becomes a big mess. And um, I'm wondering if there's any way, if you're saying it's required by law to have that consultation, is there any way we can fast track that? I'll, I'll be reluctant to go out for another 18 months. Yeah. Um, it certainly felt like 18 months to me and go around it because I don't think this um, op option would be on the table anymore after that and yeah. we'll be in a position that we don't want to be in. So, as I understand, I, I mean, I don't think anybody's internally, council wise, there's nobody against this proposal that I'm aware of. Um, the only other thing I could suggest is um, an agreement to lease subject to public consultation and the building being brought up to code. So would that, I'm assuming that the, the, um, the trust is needing some sort of, um, so some issue, sort of, some you know, issue, just to be very, so to be really clear, the trust will be going to the bank and borrowing money oh. to do and, and fix up the building. So you have to think about if you were a lending agency and lending to them, uh, I'd be very reluctant if, if there is no certainty in any of those things that have been looked at. If it's subject to the vagaries of the public and all that stuff, they will, you know, they 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 won't be getting money 
a then, then the, 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 well, that, well, that can be worked around, but if there are significant delays and all that, um, you know, with interest rates rising and various other things, we are, I think now, because of the 12 months plus delays we've got, that we are facing this uh, option uh, falling over. Okay. But is there any way of fast tracking it? This is a, this is a consultation out of the community. So if someone got on their bike and went around and talked talk to everyone within the Kaihau, we picked up uh, the addresses <laughs> and sent it all around. Uh, can, you know, is there any way we can actually meet these obligations? Or as the chair said, do we actually need to uh, go out for consultation, given that it's got a history of being used for I don't know how many decades? Um, 1956. There's a place in the place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, there's um, a lot of decades. Nice. So, um, I could go back to the Department of Conservation as the administrator of, of the Reserves Act and see if they would agree that the purpose, the current, that the the proposed lease, the purpose of the proposed lease is similar enough to the past occupation that it doesn't need to be publicly notified. Or, okay, so, or, but you cannot, you can't actually fast track the, but if they come back and say, no, you need to do public consultation, you can't fast track it. It's laid out there, it is a month long and hearings have to be heard if, if required. Sorry, do you know when it was made in reserve? Um, I know, so it was freehold land, interestingly, so it was, although people tend to think of it as being a domain, it's not It's not the original Okaiho domain, it was purchased, it's council freehold land that they chose to classify as reserve in, I think I've got it here, um, 1998. So it, it, it was actually um, gazetted and changed to reserve in 98? No, it was classified recreation reserve in '98. Yes. Oh, hang on, hang on, no, no. Back, back up. So, I, I understand that there are two types of reserve in the far north. There's those that are under the Reserves Act mm. as the reserve. Yep. Okay, and then there's a, there's a bunch of land that is not a reserve under the Act, but we classify it as, as reserve anyway. Which one's this? So this is this, this was freehold land, so it's not crown derived. It was never a reserve before. Council purchased it, and then chose okay. to bring it under the Reserves Act in 1998. Okay. Okay. So so it was the the the, 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 the change was gazetted and all that kind of stuff. Yep. Yep. Great. So we chose to bring it under, and and that's something that I now um, bring up now. When if you have freehold land and you choose to bring it under the up under the reserves act, why are you wanting to do that? You know, because it does yes, have so some that, that does have some uh, meaning. So if I understand correctly, it was a play centre, and they turned it into a recreation zoo. No, no. No, no, I don't. I cannot find that at all. I cannot find that it was ever. They didn't change the classification, as far as I'm aware. It was classified. Okay. How quickly can you track down the Gazette notice for the change of? I've got it right here. In front of me. I, I've okay. got here right here in front of me. So this is reserving okay. it, classifying it for recreation purposes. Okay. And before that, it was just freehold land on a title. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so, but it, so the way forward is what we need to know. So either we we do a month's consultation, four weeks consultation, which wouldn't. Okay, how much notice do you have to give for that? Um, so we just we one month we advertise it for a month. People have a month to reply, and being this time okay. of the year, it couldn't happen until mid January, I think it is. Public consultation was. And give a, I, I, re, I really want an honest answer here, Kay. Is there any chance that this will, if, if we say go out to consultation, it will actually happen from the middle, the middle of January to the middle of February? I mean, because this, this is, this is, we, we have, we have made no, not, not so much promises, but we have, as, as a community board, we have encouraged this lady to work with us and work with the council, and we've all been disappointed. Okay, and and what I, I mean, I would rather break the rules and get this thing done. Um, then wait another 18 months. You won't wait, have to wait 18 months, I don't think. Um, well, except, except that we've been waiting this long so far. I mean, you know, like I say, we, we've been 
given soothing noises from the from the staff and the, the in the council like the council organization that this is underway and in process and in fact i think um you know the, the lady or high wife community education trust has also been given those soothing noises and you know, negotiate you know, we i was told okay and i haven't seen this before now but when this when this agenda preview came to me i was told there's a report coming with a lease okay and then and, and, and everywhere i looked that was the impression and so you know we haven't been able to chase down this because we were promised that it was finished right i mean if, if we had known in may that this was required then we would be pushing for this in may rather than a lease and so we've been given the wrong information and therefore we've made decisions and our energies have been put in the wrong place so my, and, and, and i have i have absolutely no faith and you can is sean online no okay well you can record this i have absolutely no faith in the organization that they will be able to bring this to, to fruition um in the time that I'm, I'm now being promised no faith whatsoever right okay but i would like to add to that 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 is happening all over the place like the uh rowing one and then like the uh Bowling club one and open only. There's a yes. whole lot of leases that haven't reached fruition. Yeah. And I'd like to know why that is happening, you know. I don't know. Uh, there's frustrated people around everywhere. So, okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll just take over here from Kay. Okay. Um, right, okay, so our two choices are this, okay? Um, we can pass this and, um, and let Kay do her job. Okay, or we can send a strong message to the council. I don't know whether it's going to. If we if we send a message to council, um, do we just want this thing leased? Will it appear at the next meeting? Okay, in no. December. No. No. The okay. closed, don't you? Okay, so this, this so, the, so the promise that she was given that whatever when it went through the community board or the council is wrong. No, this process that it comes to the community board first and then to council. It will go to council, but it's likely to be in the February meeting. She she did present to the last council meeting, was it? Or one before? I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, so the promises were made. Yeah, no, the message, the, 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 and I'm pretty sure they're writing. Okay, the message I got was this is a formality through the community board and it's already in the De December meeting. Okay, so all we had to do was, it was effectively, there was no, there was going to be no worries putting it through the community there could be no delay and here we are delaying it yeah and, and this is as i said before this is the real concern that i have that like if i were quite honestly if i was her i would be throwing my toys out of the cot and saying they it's just it's not going to happen how she is so patient i don't know um and, and my patient is certainly um uh, wearing very thin and i will be speaking to the ce in, in very strong terms as well because to me, it's, it's just, and I'm not looking at particular stuff, you just don't think that at all. I, I, it, it's, it's much higher in the, in the uh, chain, and I'm not happy with our delivery at all. So I'm getting that off my chest, Mr. Chair. Okay, so, so it, it, I'm trying to think of this way. Um, we could also um, add, make an amendment to this, this, um, this motion with, um, with our opinions and strong words attached to it. I'm quite happy to do that as well. So where do you guys want to go? Yeah, the problem I have, Mr Chair, is that I can understand the rules, I can understand the law that's happening here, but I can't understand why was, why was this not done um, last year. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. And, and now to find this, and but the other thing on top of that, the information that I was getting, the request that the community board made to be delegated the full authority to deal with this, I'm sure this issue would not have been, would have been dealt with and notified before. Now to find it now to find as, as you said before, we're now on step one. It's, it's like we've been spending 18 months and achieved absolutely nothing. Look, I mean, if, if, I, if I hadn't been told the other day that there is no, by the CEO, that there is no conspiracy, I would damn near, I would, I would be saying that there is a conspiracy. Um, but I've been assured that there are no conspiracies against the West and no conspiracies against me or the Kaibei Hokianga Community Board, so you can wipe that one from your minds. Yep. So, okay. so the problem I have now, Mr Chair, is, is, um, is how we can 
rescue the situation, achieve a consultation that is is a, is a minimum of months required? Is there any way we can shorten that? I don't think so. Well, if, we, if we're going to follow the rules, it's a month. Can, is can this I your interrupt? job, Kay, to put the clock yes. on? Jay, is this, is this your job? So we, can, we can't, you, you're going to look me in the eyes. Yep. Okay, and promise me that we can have this start in the middle of January. Um, Hand on heart. So I will tell you, here I am. Um, under the Reserves Act, 10th of January is the earliest that we, in the new year, that we're allowed to add publicly advertise. Um, so 10th of January for one month. Yeah, Reserves has lots of rules. <laughs> um, so 10th of January is the date um, for the next year. So we can start do a month's public consultation from the 10th of January, providing that our communications team can have it, a package put together by then. And that could be a stretch because we only come back to work on the 10th of January. And can they put a package together? And and oh, and the other thing is sorry. And the other thing is it hasn't gone to council to have approval yet either. So we can't actually start that in tenth of January. <laughs> so and, and of course it can't be on the next meeting because the December meeting can't squeeze it in there. No, we've just been told. We, I mean, we were we were told that it was already on. I was told it was already on the agenda, and it just it was a, as an assumption that this would go through. I hope that someone didn't get mixed up with one another one that I've got, which is happening for that one. It's going to the to the December meeting, but it's for the tennis club. Um, so possibly someone got something mixed up. I have definitely got one going to the tennis club. So this will take another eight months. I mean, we're, we're already four months in just just in process, right? I don't know. You're looking at the next council meetings. You're looking at the next community board meetings. Yeah. So we're saying that it'll go to council in February, and then nice public. And so if we have, how, how sorry. long have you known that we had to go for public consultation, and why was why wasn't the, the community board or anybody for that matter informed, including council, when they said go out and do the lease around the council table? So I'm so not sure. Different. So who else has been June, involved? June last year, Kay. Who else has been in involved? In June last year, the council made a resolution just to lease the damn thing. So are we now ignoring what the council resolution was as well? I'm not aware of the council resolution. So Jeanette England. Um, All resolutions, I was told also, get noted and, and uh, as action items and none get dropped. Um, so, on the 24th of February, who's this? Mark Black. Oh, so, this was the chap that did move into Rob Coops' position. So, the 24th of February, he received something from the Play Centre Association trying to establish what would happen next to their building. Wanting to sell the building which they own and they're looking for permission, for permission from the landowner. So Play Centre Association approached council the 24th of February looking for permission to sell the building. And we said to them, yes, we don't want the building. I consulted Jeanette England. She said, no, we do not have the building left on the property. They are more than welcome to sell the building and move it off. That's the, that's what we wanted to happen. And then after that, and that's well, then they moved, they supposedly found they tried to put it on trade me and get someone to take it away, but no one was interested. And then the Early Childhood Centre came forward. So to me, this is this is all I've got starting in February, which was nearly a year ago now. <laughs> so what happened prior to that, I'm not privy to that. And I certainly only recently learned that the community board thought that they might be able to run or administer the lease, but the Reserves Act doesn't allow for that. The Reserves Act is a delegation to council. Council can't delegate. No, no, the no, no, no. We, we asked the delegation to negotiate the lease because that was, oh, this okay. was the thing, right? I mean, the, 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 what, what this woman was being told was everything is sweet, except we want you to fix up the building before we give you a lease, which was kind of crazy. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a chicken e it's a ch chicken and egg thing, isn't it? Really, we don't want well, to be. I mean, I mean, I mean, the thing is, if her if her lease was conditional upon her um, putting it bringing it up to standard, again, she doesn't. Then you then you cancel the lease. I mean, there, there was no point in her having the thing if it wasn't even brought up to standard. But I mean, that that was a gimme. I mean, I I've never signed a lease with with that kind of you know do this stuff before we give you a lease. That's crazy. It's, and and I might add, 
um, the, the distrust she has of council that she wouldn't sign that lease, so at least sort of wouldn't do such a thing um, before signing a lease has been borne out by this very situation, right? I mean, you know, none of the things that she's been told, or sorry, none of the things that she's told me that she's been told um, have been truthful. And I, and I know, once again, Kay, I mean, I know it's not you, um, because you've only you've recently been brought into it, but, but the organisation um, is hiding behind, well, so somebody, some people in the organisation are hiding behind this veil of, of anonymity, anonymous, whatever the word is, um, to, to, and bureaucracy, um, to stretch this thing out. I mean, I know it's, it may, maybe it's not deliberate, um, but that certainly seems that way. From what I can read, I think there was concerns that council didn't want, as, you, as you've already pointed out, we don't want to end up with a, a derelict building or something that we're responsible for. Um, but you're right, this does seem to have extended well, out well, over time. Yeah, because I mean, I, my, my, my reading of the situation is, um, is that the lady who signed the lease back in 1956 um, did, not, did not pass it on to the Place Center Association. So effectively you've got a building that's owned by the Place Center Association, on your land, so it's effectively your problem, right? And in fact, we made the point at the um, at the June LTP session um, that if we don't get this done, then the vandalism is going to increase. Nobody's going to want it, and it's going to require $100,000, which I tried to get in the LTP to remove it. The best, you know, the best thing to do would just be to lease the damn thing and make it her problem. And and and, and that's why at the time the council chose to say just lease it rather than put $100,000 aside to demolish it and remove it. Okay, and here we, like I say, here we are six months later, um, we're at step one of what should have been finished. Um, yeah, so I've never ever found the, an original lease for this, this property uh, to a place centre association, and I wondered if there was perhaps... There was never a lease. There was. It, I, I can. I can get. A, I can get a copy of the lease. It's. It's held by the original organisation that leased it to who were the administrating body back in 1956. They've still got a copy. It was just a. Well, she wasn't so much a lease as a, a letter of application and a minute saying we what we lease in 1956. Again, okay, it was never transferred from that that lady who who was no longer involved to anybody else. So. Um, you can't really say that she's. You can't really say it's her lease anymore. I imagine it probably just expired, um, but it's been used by a place centre without a lease for all those years. And so, you, you, I mean, you can't you can't really obligate the place centre to remove it, or you can't really obligate anybody. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's it, it, illegally. And this has been told to me by many a property officer. If it's on our land, we own it, right? And here we are. Um, you know, here, like I say, we we are. We are trying to get this thing solved, um, and mm. we're not solving it. And it looks like we're going to not solve it for the next year. Well, three months. <laughs> three months, I would say. Well, no, I mean, it's three months before it even gets to council, right? Oh, true. So we'd get to council in February. So if we had the package, the um, communications package organised. No? Yep. So, is, is, does February sound right? If if it goes to a council meeting, I can't breaking up. Hey, I'm just talking to um, uh, Marlene before the date in February. One moment. February council meeting will be. Sorry, Laurel. Laurel, we'll get to you. But that's right. Twenty-fourth of February. So twenty. Okay, so it's the twenty. It's now, it's now, it's now not February. It's the end of February. Twenty-fourth <laughs> of February. Yep. So if we had a communications package organised to go ahead as soon as that resolution is passed, then it would be one month, so say, let's say end of March, four, we end, four weeks, end of March, um, and that would be the end of public consultation, and then depending on what comes out of that, and the board's recommendation, if they've had to hear hearings to council, there could be a lease in progress. Um, it would then have to, you would make your recommendations having had, heard, the, heard the public consultation, um, and we'd have a draft lease. Hopefully, somebody will have done some negotiations between council and um, the educational trust. Uh, and there would be a lease in place. Otherwise, if the consultation hadn't, if the lease terms haven't been finalised, there could be the option of doing an agreement to lease. So as soon as we get confirmation that the public are happy with this and the board has put 
a recommendation to council that we go ahead with leasing this property, we could just have an agreement to lease, which would just have basic terms. It would just agree on whether it's going to be five plus five years, you know, five years plus five years of renewal, um, whatever the rental is going to be, and and subject to the building being upgraded and leave it at that. And they, they would then have this agreement to lease, which they could take to the bank. Um, and then even, and then if the final terms of the lease haven't been sorted, they can then work on those while they're getting their funding. So that's another option. It's adding in another step called an agreement to lease, but at least it doesn't require quite the same depth of negotiation as a full lease document. Okay, I, I'm going to suggest that we've been outmaneuvered as a council. <laughs> okay, and we just got we've just got to suck it up. There's no, um, no way they're going to open it this coming year. No, look, I, I, I think we but I think we acknowledge that, and we acknowledge it in our in our resolution somehow. So there's a permanent record about this. I would also like to know what other leases are in our Western Ward. We can ask that separately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because you know there's a lot of leases that aren't resolved, like the. Uh, Rand office in Rowany, like the bowling club at Open Army. Yeah, well, in the hall, I mean, that, yeah, this, this one's particularly egregious because we're not even to that stage, right? Yeah. Um, so, hey, look, um, Kay, thank you very much. Um, what we'll do is we're going to take a, um, a five minute break to get our lunch. We'll have, we'll do a, a quick discussion about it and see what kind of amendments we can make, and um, we'll carry on. Okie dokie, that's good. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, okay, thanks. Bye. Bye. Okay, grab your, grab your lunch, guys, and see if we can get... Uh, right, meeting... Uh, sorry, Aisha, can you close down the meeting? We'll
Who's the left hand icon? The left hand icon. It's recorded, isn't it? I just started the recording. For of our meeting. Oh, no, nobody's there. Oh, Alicia, I see you. Thank you. Will I hide? Yeah. Okay, right. Let's back to the meeting. Um, so we're back now to item number um, 6.2. I'd like to move an amendment. Again, my amendment is um, add to C that the Kaikou Hokianga Community Board expresses extreme disappointment in the delays and apologises and shares in all of the grief of the affected parties. Do I have a second on that? Yep. Okay. Now, all those in, all those in favour of that addition? Yep. Aye. Okay. So the full motion becomes uh, is, there, is there one more discussion or you just want to pass the standing? Just pass it. Okay. So the motion becomes um, well, you can read it on your. On your um, Agenda. The Coco Hawke County Community Board, under acting under delegated authority, and pursuant to Section 733 of the Reserved Act 1977, recommends to Council that a consultation process start um, and that the, we're appointed to hear any submissions and that we apologise. All those in favour? Uh -huh. Aye. Carried. <coughs> Okay, 6.3, Statement of Community Board Fund Account as of 31st October. Do I have a mover? Yeah. Seconder? Yeah. Any discussion? Yes. Mr Chairman, I'd like to ask a question. Yep. It's a 2016-2017 for a junior bike park. Yep. That's four years ago. Why hasn't it been picked up? That was money. Um, I think I'll be honest, I think I'm going to discuss that. It's, it's supposed to have been tra um, tra uh, transferred across to the current Memorial Park um, work, and then so this it's just an oversight or a delay. It's a hell of a lot not being spent. However, well, a lot of things have been cancelled because of COVID. All those in favour? Aye. Anybody against? Carry. Funding applications. Radio. Um, does anybody have anything they wish to say that is, is is more proper to be considered in public exclusion? Because it might be affecting privacy or something like that of an of a natural individual. Okay, in that case, we'll do everything. We won't bother about that. We'll just go straight into it. Um, you're all happy to take them separately? Yeah. So, is there right mover for the one for um, the Educational Trust? Yes. Okay, and what do you want? Do you want a blank in, in negotiation or do you want to go the whole minute? Uh, blank in negotiation. Okay, so Ella moves that the Kaikou Hokkien Community Board approves the sum of blank to be paid from the board's community fund account to Hokkien Community Educational Trust for the purpose of a shredder chipper to support the following outcome, uh, community outcomes. Proud vibrant communities, communities with health, safety, connected and sustainable. Do I have a second now? Or is it? No. Okay, right. Um, Ellen, would you like to start? Um, I, I think it's a good um, idea to have a Chip a mulcher for the project so that they're able to progress with um, money. You yes? Was I the second one? Who was the second one? You. Yeah, no, I, I think it's a community, good community activity and I'd like to see it approved and for the amount that there's in the motion. Cool. Here we are, Mr. Top, we go to negotiate. Yes, I do. Kelly. Kevin, you're happy with that? 
Yeah, so it's just for the future. Great. I'm just wondering if there yeah. should be a note in the end. Oh, yeah, I think we've got it. That's okay. I think that um, she got it too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, I'm just afraid that it, it's a toy. Yeah. Yeah. I know it. I've seen chippers and six horsepower is not much more than a lawnmower. And somebody will shove a shaft in, bang, gone. You better to upgrade it a little bit for them to wait a little bit of time to get their money to get the, the larger one, the 10 horsepower one. I think there um, there'd be probably some context. I think there's one there. But, anyway, but I agree with Laurie that, that I've, I've seen one being used um, at the Sun Garden, digging 30 horsepower one, and uh, that worked okay. It wouldn't go less than that. No. It's just that they're going to share it in the community. God knows who's going to use it and how they're going to use it. I mean, this one here would do, say, grape prunings or something like that. But boy, you wouldn't want much more than 12, 15 millimetres. Mm. Mm. Okay, that. so numbers. Who wants to start with you, Laurie? What's the dangerous? Yeah, if you don't have them right, they'll shove their hand down and next thing they'll lost their the finger. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not right like that, Laurie. <laughs> Just <laughs> Yeah, you know, okay, Laurie, what, what number are you going to need to shred <laughs> <laughs> What number, what number, Laurie? Hello? What number, how much? Sorry. How, how much do you want to give them? Well, I'd rather give them a bit more or, or tell them to wait until they can raise enough money. Because, six, as I say, six horsepower, it'll hardly do lawn clippings. It's not much more than a motor motor. But the 10 horsepower one, that looked better for me. I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave it to the end. What do you, I'll come back to you, Laurie. Louis? Yeah, I'm happy to give them the whole amount, but yeah, I agree okay. that they probably need something bigger. Yeah. Whole amount. Okay. John? Yeah, based on the same thoughts as Laurie, I've given the whole, whole amount. I hope that they will. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the whole amount. So the, the motion becomes the proof of the sum of 2999 plus GST. But look, look all you pay from the Board of Community Fund account, the Hokianga Community Education Trust for the purchase of a shredder, chipper, and support to find out community outcomes. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Anybody against? Thank you. Right. Number two, number two B. Someone like to move that? Yeah. Plan for money. That was the group that came in here, wasn't it? No, no, these people never come at all. Um, okay. Actually, I was quite happy to get them there. Okay, so Kelly moves that we approve the sum of 1059 to be paid from the Boards Community Fund account to parent parent Northland for the transport, permission, catering of money, a footprint of coupe, facilitator fees, and volunteer costs for some of the activity days to support the Boards Community outcomes, proud by our communities, communities that are health, safety, uh, connected to sustainable, do I have a seconder? Okay, anyone, uh, Kelly, you wish to talk? No. Anybody else wish to talk? No, I just had a few concerns with regard to where they're all located. I think on the on the application form they were in Hamilton. It's sort of from a fairly large area. Like here it says they're going to be from Waipoa to wherever. But it's going to be from people all over the place by the looks of it. Am I looking at the right thing? Yeah, but I think that the person who's Hamilton, I mean, if this person that's filled this application out is acting funding lead, I mean, we're in COVID, so sometimes you'll get funding assistance by someone that knows what they're doing that might live in Hamilton. In our northern region. Where the physical address is actually Kaihau. Parent to parent, Northern covers Tihana in the south, Cape Rehanger in the north. And the funds are going to pay for services provided in yeah. Open Oni. Yeah, yeah. So it's Tomorrow, bringing yeah. people. Yeah. And I think those kids, what they deserve it. Yeah, okay. They're not a hard life. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to say? <laughs> okay. Anybody else?
All left in favour? Yeah. And against? Carry. And D. Um, this is to put a packy. When you don't get it across, it's all in the oven and track spotlights. Do I have a motion? Okay. Okay. So John moves the Kaikou Kaikou Hook and the Community Board approves the sum of blank to be paid from the board's community fund account to Perth Peki Community Art Gallery Trust for cost of sort of other than track spotlights for the following community outcomes. Provided by my community, community for the health, safety, next and sustainable. Do I have a second? Yep. Yeah. Alan. Yeah. Right, John. We'd like to talk. Um, I'll let you with this. Approves the sum of seventeen forty nine to be paid from the board's community fund account to put the key community art gallery for costs and to all other track spotlights um, for those outcomes. All those in favour? Aye. Anybody against? To carry. You ought to do more business up at lunch. It seems to go much faster. Mm -hmm. Received from Arco Foundation, Bayline Clean Canine Association, Kaiko Business Association, Tapua, or Kupun Kupe Nuku Incorporated. Um, Kelly or Laurie, we call? No. Uh, Laurie? Sorry, what was that? Do you want, do you want to say anything about it? We're on 6.5, eh? 6.5, yeah. yeah. I'd just like to ask there's 20,000, 21,000 on scaffolding by. That seems a hell of a lot of money when we've got a 
hall right next door. Why are they spending that sort of money on a scaffold? I saw it there. I mean, and it was a great turnout and everything else, but that's a hell of a lot of money on scaffolding. And we've got a big hall, one of the best halls in the in, in the district. That's actually uh, I think that's an interesting, interesting question. Okay, if you own this Bay of Island scaffolding, isn't it? Just giving the money away. That's a question we put Arco next time, because I'll, I'll be back. No? Arco will be back for, the, for this again. So, no, they won't be because we already gave them seven and a half thousand dollars for next year. So oh, yeah. have... Thank you. You made a good point. They They'll be back after we get elected next time. Okay. Yeah, we'll Sorry, when you, you guys get elected next time. Okay, um, anyone have any further comments? Okay, all those in favour? Aye. Anybody here? Carried. Okay. So 6.6 .6 is the information reports, in this case the action sheet. I'll move the Kaikei Hokianga Committee Board, receive the Kaikei Hokianga Committee Board action sheet, update report November 2, 2021. Do I have a second now? Okay, does anyone have any comments about this? The, yeah. the water filled. Yeah, the water filled. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's right. That's, that's what we talked about. Talk okay, about. so I think I think that's worth um, at least mentioning that we would in some way fund or look at funding that or something like that, so that it can be get done. I mean, we, we because what we all, all already understand we're not going to be meeting in February, so nothing can be done by us until February unless we start this this workshop. Okay. We're going to start the meeting. Um, so. Um, can why don't we indicate that to Nina? Who's... Why don't we? Okay, we'll finish this, and then we we will make a a little bit of a motion to discuss that, and perhaps deal with it in terms of um, uh, just expressing our our interest in, I guess, funding. Because I mean, the funding will have to come from us, right? And that's the point. It'll, it'll be placemaking funding. Would council have some of those barriers? Well, I'm hoping that our, um, the NTA partners or you know the, the uh, contractors would have something like that, so it should be fairly simple and fairly inexpensive to do. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of whether or not we can um, express that we'd like that to be done on our coin. We could put it down as a temporary measure until the permanent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but that permanent options can be. Yeah, I mean, those, those permanent options aren't, aren't, at the, aren't, aren't for discussion now. It's more along the lines of what, what could we do before Christmas. Yeah. Okay, do you, okay, well, let's, let's, let's get through this and then I'll, um, you can put that motion to discuss. There we go from there. Anybody else want to talk yeah. about this? When, when are we getting our cargo list for podcasts? Uh, Next week. Next week. Like we 
Joseph put my yeah. hand aside for doing it. Well, Gary was the one who told me that being reclassified as race was just too white. That was what you were told by Sandy. Yeah, you said they were made wider. That would be the reason why. Oh, the shared paths. Yeah, yeah, shared paths are down the middle. The roads. So what about the shared paths? There aren't any. Yeah, all shared paths. All shared paths are covered. Oh. So that means nothing's going to get done. So they were top, top. They were top of our list because they're important, um, and they were so important they had to be shared paths, which makes them off our list. So work that way out. Something to follow up. Yeah. It's not right. Okay, any other questions on or any comments about this? Yep. Report, where you go. The, the Amakri Wharf, is there any progress with regard to that? Uh, we passed along our second motion, our second resolution, um, and that, that will be passed on to the CE for further action. Yeah, so I have any more. That was really well done. Thanks, Mark. It's okay. Anybody okay. else? No. Okay. Right. All those in favour of receiving this report? I've managed to. No. All right. Okay. Anybody against? Carried. Okay. So, um, did I hear you say, Member Louis? Um, that you wanted to move a motion under the Luguma Part 26 to discuss the issue of Ahutakawa trees in... Yeah, yeah, I did say something like that. Okay, do I have a second for that? Yeah. Okay, now, um, under Luguma we've got two options here, and you, you, you basically had a, a, a discuss option and a deal with option. Okay, so we, we've chosen the discuss option, okay, which basically means that we will discuss what you have and then we'll move on from there. So, Louis, you have an issue with the Pahutakawa tree? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, just, just out of interest, why, why, why wasn't it on the agenda? Because you just found out? Well, I thought it, there would be something coming forward. There was okay. supposed to be a report okay. delivered at the end of October. That was Okay, it. cool. And, and the, reason mm -hmm. it can't, the reason it can't be can't wait till February? Well, summer's coming and the whole Auckland hordes are going to be ending up here. Yeah, it's going to be a busy summer. Okay. We don't have a meeting until February this year. And, 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 and okay. the issue that needs to be resolved. Okay, so... Even if it's temporary. Okay, so what are, the, what are the kinds of things that you might have out there? So you, you talked about the, the water filled. Yeah, a temporary measure until something permanent can be erected, like curb and channeling or something like that. Okay. Uh, or, or bollards. Close to the road, although you don't want to sort of affect the root structure of the Pahutakawa trees, you've got to be careful with yeah. regard to that. And maybe the other option is the sandbag option that we've had in place before. Any other thoughts on the matter? So, you, does everybody know what we're talking about? So, it's the Pahutakawa trees that we've had, we've been we waiting for how many months? So, so, I mean, don't say 18 because I've already been told about that. Oh, it's been longer. Yeah, maybe. it's been longer than that. Okay. We brought the issue up ages ago. One of my reports. Okay. Um, and so we've got an issue with summer coming, people wandering up and destroying their food power trees or yep. bird roots, bird power trees. Yep. We know how much the far north loves the bird power trees. Yep. Um, and I'd hate to be a repeat of the new no experience. It's not as though there is a parking shortage because there's plenty of parking in front of the shop and at the top. It's part of the problem is laziness and people, they just want to zip up, run into the shop, come back out and continue on their journey. Yeah. That's, that's where the problem lies. Okay. And the 200 year old notable, notable trees. Okay. So we have um, a significant amount of place making money um, yeah. that's been out okay to us. And I'm just wondering whether or not that, that you know, a putting of the the barriers and filling with water um, would be a, a sensible use of part of that money. It should measure anyway until something, you know, something's, it's too late to do anything permanent because of summer this year. Yeah. But like a temp as a temporary method, that would probably suffice. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure how those things are fairly indestructible, are they? Like, oh, they use the motorways, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. 
as a good idea. Yeah. Okay, so is this something that the board would wish to to allocate money towards? We'll just have to make another motion to deal with this and then pass it on. Yeah. For this table? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so is, did I just hear you, um, Louis, say that you'd actually like to deal with the subject now? I move we deal with the subject. Yep. Okay, do I have a motion? Second or three? Yep. Oh, okay. Second. Cool. And the reason you want you want to deal with it, sorry, you want to what wasn't on the agenda is the same reason as before. And the reason you can't wait is because of the same reason as before. Yep. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Okay. So what is the motion? That um, the Me Board fund um, for Hudakawa tree protections. Uh, those plastic things. So yeah, those, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. But, but, and we suggest those plastic barriers with water. Uh, is, it interim measure is, it interim, is it interim measure? Sorry, Hang on, no, 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 we'll come back to you. Is an interim measure while we explore more permanent options? Yeah. Okay, so um, so uh, Louis moves that the community board is willing to fund water filled barriers to protect the Pahutukawa trees over the holiday period until more permanent solutions found. So I'll second with that. Yeah, I'll second it. Yeah, I'll second it. Okay, any, any discussion? Almost didn't get a second. Yeah, that's what I need for someone else. Okay, everybody's happy with that? I mm -hmm. can make that sense. Okay, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. Anybody against? Carried. Apologise, Mr. Chairman, I have to go. That's fine. Okay, right, we're just, I think we've done, haven't we? Just yeah. give a call. Merry Christmas. Okay, Merry right. Christmas. Merry Christmas. I thought John Carter's letter was a bit rich. Okay, yeah. 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 I don't mind them funding it out. They have a $10 million body corporate and they're asking the community board for their money. Yeah, it was no. good. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks, Laurie. Have a good day. Right, meeting closed. Thank you very much. Okay, so.